Yeah. Me, that's what I felt that you know inside I have British blood. Yeah. But I look like a Ugandan. <laughs> <laughs> and let us fill the UK with more black people. Mm. Please, I need your help. <laughs> I need your help. <laughs> My black brothers and sisters, <gasps> I appeal to you, please. I told you actually. Come please. over now. And let us fill the UK mm. with more black people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, my first impression as a UK, I was like, wow, these roads are so clean. I was like, okay. like I, I was like, I can walk on the roads barefooted. I'm telling you, I just, literally, I just... Welcome back, everybody, to Noor Speaks Out. I'm Noor, and you guys know this channel is all about African history and diaspora stories. And on this episode, I'm very excited to introduce um, and to interview um, the husband of uh, Dr. Cece, who you saw on another video. I'll put the link in this description as well. Um, Edward, he's going to tell us about his story, his experiences of moving from Uganda um, to the UK. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank, yes, you thank you for coming on my YouTube channel. If you wouldn't mind, can you please introduce yourself? Tell us um, a little bit about yourself and also where you were born and raised, please. Yeah, I'm Edward Bichivi. I was born in Uganda, raised in Uganda. Came to the UK in 2017. Mm. Yeah, so I'm here trying yeah. to... But where, in, where in Uganda were you born? I was born in Kampala. Kamp Kampala. So, city boy? Yeah, mm -hmm. city boy, yeah. Yeah, and raised there as well. Most yeah, of raised there. Most of, yeah, all okay. my life I was raised in Kampala. So you're yeah. a proper Muganda boy, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you make the move? So some of you already may, if you've seen the video already, you know why. Um, you We heard from the, your wife, from her perspective. What was the reason that you wanted to come to the UK? Yeah, I came to the UK, of course, because of my wife. Mm -hmm. But I also came to the UK because... I saw this opportunity to try out something new, to get more money. And of course, because of the economic situation in Uganda, it wasn't that good. Mm -hmm. So I decided to just leave my job there as I, I was a banker. And then I decided to come here. That's the reason why I came to the UK, to earn more money, to have a better standard of living. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Those who know me, I went to Makere Child Center. It's a nursery school uh, uh, there below. Faculty of Arts, Faculty of Arts is like there, then there's the upper section down Macquarie Child Center. Actually, my grandfather used to work up there, Faculty of Arts, he was a professor. But I used to go to Macquarie Child Center. Then I, for my primary school, I went to Lohana Academy. It was an Indian school, basically a lot of Indians. Mm -hmm. Started with Indians and then have many OBs there. Then um, secondary school, which is Olevo, I went to Seta High School, mm -hmm. the main campus, which is in Seta, the original campus. Then after I finished that level, I went to Elevo, which is the higher level, Elevo. I went to Namrembe Hillside, Chitetika. So I decided to move away from Seta to Namrembe Hillside because I was so tired of the other side. I was tired. You know how you do, you're so used to teachers. Maybe you're dodging a teacher like this. Okay. You, you, you know, you have like problems with a specific teacher. And this. I said, you know what? I need to change. So I went and I changed to Namrembe Hillside, Chitetika. I went there. But Hillside was so tough. It was very, very tough. It shaped me in a way. It was a, actually, it was a very nice school, Hillside, yeah. Chitetika, because I faced a lot of challenges. Mm. I saw many things, I met so many people, friends, and the A level just like top, topped up. Like every step of education I went, I can't regret any school I went to because I kept on learning different things, how to associate with people, mm. the social side, the people who are, there are people who are bullies, there are people who are friendly, there are people, like I really, I saw different different characters and different people from different walks of life. Mm. Then after the secondary school, um, I really, really performed well. As, as I came from the lower classes going to the higher classes, my performances increased and I, my, my results really, really improved over time. And 
I managed to pass highly and I went to Makerere University, which is the best university in Uganda, mm. academic-wise. And there I went and I did a bachelor's of business administration, majoring in procurement. I got my degree there. I um, went on to work in Centenary Bank. Centenary, okay. Yeah, Centenary Bank. I worked there for, well, I think, from probably 2015 to 20. 17. Okay. So I had, I had to leave because I was coming this side. Mm. Yeah. So 2017, you've, you've got your bachelor's, you've got your two years experience in banking. You've moved over now. Uh, your wife comes first, isn't yeah. it? Um, and then you come over. How, what was your first impressions of the UK? Um, okay. Well, my first impressions of the UK, I was like, wow, these roads are so clean. I was like, <laughs> okay. I, was like I, I was like, I can walk on the roads barefooted. <laughs> I'm telling you, I just, literally, I just looked at the roads. They really looked like they were the roads in the movies. Everything, I just looked, wow, the roads were so clean. The, You're the, uh, the airport has ever said that. I'm telling oh, you, okay. I'm telling you, I, that's the first thing I noticed. The roads were so clean. Yeah. The, the dustbins, every, things, people are putting things in dustbins everywhere. Like, every, people are organized. Mm. Then when I went to... The supermarkets, they were so clean. You know, supermarkets in Uganda, you go there in the fridge and you find the the, the, the chickens are so frozen and what? Mm. There's maybe some blood dripping, something like that. Mm. The, the freezers are somehow a bit dirty or something like that because of the the things that have poured out of the things that maybe they were a bit not frozen. Then they, they, the liquids dropped in the things. Yeah. These guys... The freezers were open. Mm. So everything was just there. I was like, wow, what am I doing? I reached there. I see the, there are these places whereby there is a tailor. Or is this something, the person getting the money. Then there's where they're like, kind of like robots or something. That's why I said robots. Something like things. People are just putting their items there. Eh? Like it was new to me. I've never seen such, such a thing. Eh? Mm. I was like, wow, these guys are so organized. Mm. Then I was shocked. I saw some guy going out with bread without without um, it being in a bag. I was, uh, like, this, I was like, has this guy stolen the bread? Oh my days. Yet, yet I noticed that people are now going out without what? Without, without, without a bag. So I thought maybe, eh. Hey. So they told me, no, those people can go with the bread. If they are paid, they just go. No one was there to look and see whether someone has, you know, mm. not paid or anything. Mm. People were like, you know, sensitized. Everything was autopilot. The other side in Uganda, they were so used, you're trying to buy something and someone's in the corridor doing like this. On an Achiba. This one, on an is like, what? is this one going to steal it? Okay, okay. So, so I was Suspicious. like, wow. So everything was like different. I was starting to understand, starting to understand. Mm. Everything was packaged very well. A tomato was like red in the certain shape, the same shape, same shape. I was like, what? <laughs> Every, like everything was just opening up like this, mm. like this. Of course, I was cold. I was in some, you know, jackets. and But I was like, what? Everything was just, now I was, Starting to what? To like, oh, okay. if you think it's like this, mm. this, this. Yeah. So it's just a very good impression. Yes. <laughs> Minus the cold. Minus um, the cold, but yeah. But yeah, so on the whole, like, for, like the initial couple of weeks, first couple of months that you were here, you were like, okay. I was like, yeah, I was like, okay, wow, this thing. I, I was like, you know what? The internet is very fast. Mm. Like, I'll just click something like this. How go, Google. What is my name? See, your name is this, this. Mm. We're like, what? Mm. Everything was so fast. Quick. Okay. The internet was like, they are no worrying about MBs unlimited. The thing was cheap, like 20 pounds a month. Mm. Hmm? The, you could just, like, everything was just internet driven. Internet, internet. I was like, mm. wow. I was like, wow, what are we doing here? Mm -mm. Hmm? I've been missing all this all my life. Mm. I was like, wow, I'm in the right place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you felt home? Yeah, uh, very quick, I guess. Yeah, very quick because, and also, as you can see, I'm an Arsenal fan. <laughs> of course, <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Arsenal fan. So, I, I, I knew that now at that time, I was staying in London, and I knew that Arsenal was just there. Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, I was like, you know what? I have to go and meet these guys. As in Wenger, you know, I had a dream. I was like, you know what? I have to meet these guys wow, if possible. The who were you supporting know? you at that time when you first arrived, who were who were your, like, 
I guess, your pair of, your support system while you guys... Yeah, there was my, there was Sissy's um, uncle, Uncle Frank, and then there's also my grandmother, she's in London, yeah. So, okay. So, yeah, yeah. So you had some people. Yeah, were they the people. ones letting you know um, when you were mentioning um, people telling you about here and like things are a little like um, easier or the opportunities? Were they the people you were talking about when people were saying, "Oh, like in the UK, it's like this or whatever"? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were. T- they were yeah, they were telling me, you know, it's good, it's okay. This, yeah, yeah. They were telling me, yeah, it's you get a job, what? Because I was worried about getting a job. I was like, "Play, get a job." Or like this, this mm-hmm. is and that, yeah. But when I got here, everything was, was yeah. fine. And so when you came, did you what? What was what were you initially like planning to do? Were you thinking, okay, I can. Well, was it, I've been in Centenary. Maybe I'll join a bank here. What were your thoughts in terms of <coughs> your plans and yeah? Terms of my, with and the today? banks, with the banks, I think I was tired of the bank life because of the hardships in the bank climbing ladders, looking for files and this. Mm. The, the systems were a bit so traditional. Mm. Get a file, write in the file, put it back, climb the ladder, look at the client's name, do this, give the client the money, go and get a motorbike, just around the client, you know, that kind of thing. The backing system was a bit too traditional. That's mm. what I felt. Mm. I didn't appreciate it that much. But here the backing system is different. But then I knew for one that it, it can be a challenge to come from that side and, and then work here. I knew that mm-hmm. because of their level of education, it's different. So I, I of course, maybe probably had to do a certain course to convert. Okay. But at that time, I wanted quick money. You understand? Like quick money, to do something very fast so that I can achieve a goal. And that goal was to position my wife, Sissy, to make sure that she becomes a doctor here. Mm-hmm. Then using that, I would be able to watch to stay. You understand, be able to stay all of us mm-hmm. in a better environment because her her side was a bit easier because she's a doctor and they were needed. Yeah. So I say, you know what, let me just go, work myself out so that I know that I'll be able to get what? The money. So I went ahead, did the jobs that were available, and yeah, got the money. And what kind of stuff were you doing to? I did, I like did different tips? stuff. Um, post post office work, care work, uh, diff- different different stuff. Like I really really did different stuff. Moving house, mm-hmm. like someone wants to move a house, do this this this. You do different different stuff. But the good thing here is that there is a minimum wage. Mm-hmm. You you earn uh, at the time it was nine pounds per hour. Yeah, you earn the minimum wage. You do it. You get the money. You understand. Mm-hmm. But in Uganda. Uh, Anyone can give you any amount of money. Like those jobs I was doing in Uganda, you would get so little, but it wouldn't be even worth anything. Mm. You see, um, that was a good thing because I was doing those jobs, but I was earning far much more, like, let me say, um, five times more than a person working in a bank in Uganda. Mm. You understand? But I was doing those jobs. But now imagine someone who is working in a bank, maybe they're earning, I don't know, I'm not sure, but me with the jobs I know that I was doing, I was earning five times more than a person working in a bank in Uganda. Okay. And with that, I was able to help out to statistics, so would be able to do uh, different things like the English exam and all those uh, things that we needed, sustain the family mm. through those periods of time. Yeah. What would you say are some of the, the challenges, the difficulties you guys have experienced here? Um, the challenges are, of course, the change in environment. Like you see, you're seeing, of course, different people and this and this. You're getting used to the cultures here. Mm. Of course, when I was working, there was a lot of racism sometimes, you know, mm. like with a client and the client is so used to the back days and the person can be like, oh, oh my God, it's black and white, it's black and white. And tell you, you go back, you so and so. You're not supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. You understand? Then you want you want to be a British citizen. Then of course, in the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, I want to be a British citizen, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not saying you know, yeah, I'm not saying it, yeah, yeah. But in my mind, yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying of course I'd be a British citizen. You know? Mm. Yeah, that's what I want to be. I want to be a British citizen. And of course, right now, as I've finished my life in the UK exams. Yes. And uh, what, what else? The English test. I did it. I read everything. I read the history. Mm. 
I'm waiting. I'm waiting mm. to become a British citizen. Give me my British passport because I've worked hard for it. Mm. That's the law. So now I'll be a British citizen and then I'll contribute to the country mm. as a British citizen. And then you show your passport to whoever it was that said this to you. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> my, so my friend. But he, he died. He was dead. He was dead. He was, dead. Oh. Yeah. He, was, he was very, very old. He was like his clients to take care of. He was very, 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 very old. Mm. Died of old age, yeah. Okay. But, you, but you can't blame him because those, that's what you have to understand. Like, even us back in Uganda, there's a lot of tribalism, you know, this this culture doesn't like this one. Mm. This culture throws jokes at the other culture. Mm-hmm. But they, 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 uh, they do this and this. I don't want to say this. But, but then they say different, different jokes. Yeah, we, mm. all Ugandans, we all know. We all know how people joke about other, other yeah. cultures. And then this one says, this culture has a big nose. This one has mm. this one. Yeah, but... Yeah, but that, that's that's life. That's life. But just that when you get here, then someone tells you something that you're black, then you say, whoa. You say, oh, my God, wow. It's, it's like it really hits you because now you're like, you know, so many black people there and all that. Mm. Yeah, but then ev- eventually you you try, to, uh, you try to understand a bit, especially when they're the old people, because for them, they grew up in a, an environment whereby they, they were not so many mm. black people mm. and this guy okay, had dementia and he was saying probably things they used to say when they were young and maybe telling those other black people and so he just yeah, just move on with it. some grace a little bit mm. Mm. um so yeah so in terms of like the the difficulties that you face what about like um like personally but between like within your relationship were things like significantly different adjusting to the culture but also in in the new marriage because you were married quite recently as well isn't it yeah how did moving to this country sort of affect your relationship um no um for the relationship i haven't had so many problems mm. with sissy herself like because me i move a person who is open to like especially moving Mm. Like even if she she told me that she am I am I okay to go to this place this place I, I told her you know what even if it's Northern I Ireland we can go mm. even if it's uh, Isle of Man as long as it's in the UK or by Isle of Right is it Isle of White yeah, something yeah. Like, wherever we know no 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 which is it uh, Newcastle mm. all all these places I knew them back home because we used to watch football and I knew the teams they would show uh, us maps and all that stuff so I, I feel like I'm already connected to the UK mm. I feel like you know when they gave birth to me in the hospital my mom I, I suspect the doctor told her that I'm British so I had to come here and <laughs> claim my British okay. citizenship yeah because uh-huh. they changed. They changed the laws just recently and they said, you know, you can become a British citizen when you're born out of the UK. Or is this something your parents have to be citizens or something? I don't know whatever mm. they did, but me, yeah, that's what I felt that, you know, inside I have British blood, yeah. but I look like a Ugandan. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, I look like a Ugandan, but in, within me inside, if you check my blood, you just see the mm. British flag flowing out like Fine. this. Yeah. And I was saying, wow, this man is British. Wow, wow. this man, wow. this man knows all the, you know. Wow. I just, I just don't have the accent. That's <laughs> <laughs> fine. For the Arsenal top, that's enough. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, British Premier League, Champions League, everywhere. Yeah. So yeah. So, so generally, yeah. The, I didn't have problems with Sissy. Yeah. The only problem I have, and I had for the longest time to accept, were the external forces of people who are like a bit, who get involved in your life, a bit want you to do things in a certain way mm. that you're not willing to mm-hmm. do. Those are the challenges that I, I got. I realized that over time, someone can ask you to do something mm-hmm. and yet you don't want to do it because it's not the right thing to do. Mm. You understand? Um, for example, if you... Um, you know, generally, I just don't want to hurt people's feelings there mm. uh, on TV. But as you can know, certain relatives can ask you some things and then you're like, you know, I can't do it. I can't do this. And also the, the toughest challenge I faced, for example, when I said to be a stay, stay at home dad, mm. people would keep on contacting me. Oh, there is this job here. Do you want to do it? You understand? Yeah. Do you want to do it? Do you want to do this job? Come, maybe you can apply this. Is So they're not telling you directly that you, you're there at home, you're wasting time. Mm. You're not, you're a man, you're supposed to go to work. And this, the, the environment is saying that you're a man, you're supposed to go to work. How, how can a lady 
have uh, so much money more than you and this and that and that and that. But people forget that now you won. You mm. understand? You have to cooperate. You understand? Mm. You have to cooperate. You have to do things together. But then they want you to say, you now, you go. Why, why don't you go and work? They're not telling it to you in, in directly, but telling it to you indirectly by saying, oh, there's this job, yeah, there's this job. And they think that, me, I'm stupid. I cannot understand what they are trying to say. Yeah. You understand? But someone tells you something in a way that they are bringing something they're saying it in another way. They are beating around the bush to tell you something, yeah. but you then it affects you, and you're like, you like you understand. They make you feel like as if you use this. It shows you that you know these people don't appreciate what you're doing. It's not like as if you yourself you're going to them. It I would, it would be okay if I was going to them and saying, "Well, oh, give me some money. Or well, this, give me some money. I need to pay rent or this." Yeah. But I do not go to them. You know, I do not go to them. I do not do anything. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to anyone like that. But the person keeps on saying, "Oh." You need you need to do what? You need to um I mean someone tells um there's this job here. Maybe you come, maybe you can try this, maybe you understand. Mm. They try to poke their business in your life. Yeah. They don't know how you're shaping the dynamic. That's what I've noticed that as I'm here married, I'm shaping my dam- I, I operate my things in my own way mm. and I appreciate my way. Mm. You understand? And the problem I faced also was that I, I, there's some relatives I don't talk to, mm. you know, in Uganda. And I don't, I don't talk to them mm. because we, me and their breadwinner, I won't say whether it's a man or a woman, but they know themselves. Mm. We had a conversation over a certain issue. And when it came to that issue, I did not agree. Mm. I did not agree to follow the culture and carry out that issue the way the culture states it should be done. Mm. Because I felt that why should I carry out that issue yet that 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 breadwinner and have and and, and, and their followers mm. he, uh, did uh, did not take care of me mm. when I was growing up. Mm. Understand? If I was not growing up and then you want to make a decision that will affect these other people that I am have given birth to, and then you're telling me to do something in a certain way. Mm. Why should I do it? Yet you yourself were not there. Yeah. When I was growing up, and you're not paying anything for me school fees. My mother was suffering and doing everything. You understand? Mm. So when I try to be polite, yeah, and then that person did not take it as a polite one. They tried to assure me, and other people saying that I refuse to do what they had told me to do. Mm. I, I put out my fangs, mm. snake, snake has fangs. I put out my fangs and I, and I said, okay, now it's this, this, and this. Yeah. You did not do this, this. I, I so I, I assured them. I told them this, 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 this. So the person got annoyed, stopped picking up my calls and all that. Mm. I said, so that made me reminded me what my mother told me. My mother told me that my son, or she said it on the wedding day, mm. you're going to see people changing. You're going to make friends, you're going to make enemies. And I knew that. Mm. And I knew that, yes. That's what she said so, on your wedding day. Yes, what she Hi. said. That's what, yes, what she said. I remember it very well. Mm. So what I did, I let that person go. Mm. You understand? Because that's all stress. You understand? Yeah. The, the people, people, I also think with African, African culture, people will want you to do things their way. Mm. Yet the things that you're going to do in their way, are going to affect your family in a certain way. Yeah. So you have to decide. You either go by their way mm. or you go by your way. Yeah. And for me, I'm a person who is so bold, I go by my way. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yes. So you decided, so the issue in terms of like, I guess the, your, your support system, I guess, back home in Uganda mm. weren't very supportive yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they. My, my mother was supportive. My mother is supportive. My mother is always been supportive. She supports everything and that. Mm. But just on another side, yeah. on a certain side, that whereby mm. it's like I criticize. Actually, I criticize that one person. The person I I'm, I'm not talking to that much mm. is is the person blocking me. From me, from from, is is like an interface. Mm. 
mm. to the actual person. Oh, you understand? Okay. Mm. So it's like this person who I'm annoyed, who, who we are not talking to, yeah. is the interface to the person who was supposed to take care of me. Okay. So okay. this person is an interface. It's like, it's like the person who didn't take care of me is behind there. Mm. But then this person is like a shield at the front. Yeah. Talking. Yeah. You understand? Well, like, yeah. don't have the... Yeah, that's why, that's why I don't want to see the sex or this or yeah, what, what, yeah. what. Never know. Maybe I have two mothers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Yeah? <laughs> I mean, in this day and age. I... Yeah, this day and age. Never know. Never know. Never know I have two mothers. Yeah. How do you know? <laughs> How do you know? What if I what if I have two mothers? What if I have two fathers? Hmm? It's okay. We'll be short. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh my goodness. Okay. So viewers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm? How do you know? How do you know that person? Hmm? What if I have two fathers? What if I have two mothers? I don't know. Just I also don't know. But I was born British. That's the about You were born British. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> The blood flowing through your veins. Yeah. Right. So there were difficulties, some struggles mm. when you came. Yeah. Um, yeah, there were, there were so many difficulties that even during the time of the wedding, mm. there was a lot of, you know, friction. Mm. This and this. Oh, what, what, what? You know, you're, you're trying to do something, there's friction. Mm. Trying to do this, you're getting threats. You're trying to do this, you know. Mm. And then uh, this guy, he was the administrator, like, a boss, one of the bosses, comes and tells me that, oh, your relative told us that your father beat your mother. So, so I was like, what? In my brain, I was like, what? Mm. Because my dad used to, my actual dad used to, because now I'm talking about it. I'm talking about it because they put it out there. Mm. And you know, before I continue the story, this is the funny thing. These people, the other family, family A, they, 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 they kept on telling me, oh, don't put out your dirty laundry, don't say this, mm -hmm. don't say that, you understand? Mm -hmm. But for them, they have the license to go around telling other people what happened to my mom. Mm -hmm. You understand? My mom was really heartbroken. She's, she has given birth to me. And then this guy is the one she's trusting, beats her. Mm -hmm. And one of those times, I was there. I was really, really there. Hmm? My mom, my mom had just come back. I was four years old. Mm. We used to stay in like you know like an environment. I think I, I think this was the one that really made made them split or something like that. Yeah. So my mom had gone to shower. Then as she's bathing, he comes and he shouts at her, starts beating her up. So I get up from the seat. I'm watching TV. There were those TVs that you turn like this. I get up. I go to the door. I look, I see my mother is being beaten by him in mm. the... It was like at night, like it was dark, yeah. but no one is coming out. Turn you know, the African tradition said no one will come and get involved. Mm. She comes out. She comes to the... How do they call it? To the house. Yeah. She's crying. She's shouting. She's trying to defend herself. He comes. He slaps her. He beats her up. She falls down. I'm there watching. Yeah. She gets up. He pushes her towards the, the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Then he locks the door. So I'm there, four year old. Mm. I go back, I sit, and I look. I can see the picture of that yeah. situation. Mm. I can see myself. It's like a movie, actually. It's like mm. a, I can see myself there. My mother is being beaten by this, this man here, yeah. who is my dad. I'm there, I go back, I watch the TV. Mm. Hmm? Then they take me to stay with that person who is the interface. Yeah. Take me there to stay with that person. That person was good to me, the interface person. Mm. That's why I can never have any complaints about that person. Okay. Whatever that person does has done in the future or whatever, whatever, it's that, that that's how you know the African thing is that's how they have been. I have no regrets. She, the, that, that person helped me so much and yeah, I'm grateful. Yeah, I'm grateful for that. But after my dad beats my mom like that, my mom, what surprises me that my mom kept on telling me to go and visit my dad. That means that she always wanted that relationship to be there. Mm. You understand? 
And my mom has really been like an African woman. She has been, you understand? Humble, this, going, going, like going to the tune. Mm. Going to the tune. My mom really tried different things. They sent me to South Africa when I was seven years old. They sent me to on a trip to visit my uncle, everything. Mm. Of course, probably to forget, forget everything. I never talked about it. But in the back of my mind, I knew it happened. Yeah. I never and talked about it. And you remember it quite vividly. I remember. It's like a movie. Like if, I'm, if I was a director of a movie, I can direct it and I can do every. I can I even remember the, the frames of the door the colors of the walls, mm. the color of the TV, the stairs were there towards the bedroom. There were like three stairs. The floor was cement. I remember everything. Mm. The door was wood. I remember every single detail of that house. I even, even if you give me a car, I can drive and go back to that place. No matter how many houses were there, I can just feel the distance by heart. I can just, mm. I know that place very well. I know the gate. I, like, I know everything. Yeah. Like, it's cemented within me. Yeah. I know it. That's why everything I do in my life, mm. I use my dad as a mirror. Mm. Whatever he does, I don't. Whatever he, you don't. Yeah, whatever he does that, is, that I feel is bad, I don't. Yeah. But anyway, that's him. Yeah. That's him. Mm. And so I was at work, so this guy comes and tells me. I'm like, ah. So that thing... Where by now I knew I was in the work environment and I knew, wow, all these guys know what's happening, what, ha- what happened in my family back, back then, yeah. like probably like 20 something years. Yeah. So what does it make me like? And now these guys are using it as a joke at work. Mm. Every, time, every time we are discussing something or something happens, they say, oh, maybe you do, you, you, they say, they say, or maybe you've done this because because this 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 your mother or this is this this what, and I've never told my mother that thing. Mm. But I'm sure if I told my mother that thing, my mother would be so hurt. Yeah. But the problem I have is that my mother will not will not confront them or challenge them or do anything. Yeah. That's the problem I have with the African society is that people are being oppressed inside, mm. but then they pretend that everything's fine. Everything is fine. Mm-mm. And that's the problem with me. I don't pretend. I can't pretend. Mm. If you do something to me, bad to me, but I'm telling you, you viewers, if you do something bad to me, eh? stay warned. Hey. Stay warned. Mm. Okay? I will not be easy. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my. They are scared. I'm not involved in this prank. <laughs> Anyway, for me, for me, I feel like if someone does something wrong to you, you need to discuss. You need to talk about it and discuss. Mm. You understand? Discuss. Of course, my 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 dad uh, came to me and told me different things. That is it. Uh, the reason I beat your mom was because she came back late. Okay. I was like, okay. I was like, okay, but but you are not married. Mm. You are not married, and and, if, and even if you're married, she comes back late. So what? Because now I'm married, mm. and if my wife comes back late, so what? What do I do? Yeah, you understand? You do what? You do what? The person has a life. Yes. Hmm? I mean, I feel I, I feel when you get married to someone, they are not your property. Mm. You understand? You're married, but yeah, you understand. Mm. If if they cheat on you and maybe you have proof, move on. Mm. Like do divorce or something. You say you can't accept a body, move on. But this person is a person. You understand? Mm. It's a person. Yeah? I see in, in Uganda, men can go out and they stay out and they come back late. What you understand? Yeah. But you a woman, dare how, how dare you? Mm. You as a woman, how dare you go yeah. out? And then you come back at at one o'clock. Honey, you you can you you, you, just, you just found you just find the whole village there waiting for you, the elders. Mm. They can cane you. Mm. Eh? The double standard, yeah. The double standards. What is the difference? What is the difference between a woman and a man? You understand? Mm. What is the difference? It's so it's so it's so bad. It's bad. You understand? Mm. And the problem is that me when I speak, I'm a man. But when I speak about, I've spoken to these, things, these issues to various people. But when I speak about it, 
and I try to talk about the side of women, they say, ah, muchivi, aguli muchala. They say, they say, ah, you, you woman, ah, mm. you woman, you're not, you're not man enough, you're not this. Mm. But at the end of the day, I don't care. Because I have daughters, yeah. and I want the best for my daughters. Mm. Hmm? I want my daughters to be free. Mm. Hmm? I don't want my daughters to be controlled by any man that is the man slap, this, this and what. No, no, no. Mm. I want my daughters to be free in a free world. Yeah. If it means me leaving Uganda to give them a free world, I did that already. Yeah. They will decide. You understand? Yeah. Hmm? We've opened the door. At I've, least yeah, I've opened the door for way. them. It's their decision. Mm. They can always go to Uganda. If they want to live there, they can live there. They can do everything mm. they want. Mm. I've given them an opportunity and shown them. I'll give them advice. It's this and this and this and this. Mm. It's not supposed to be like this. If they want to drive the car straight to that destination, if they want to go and meander somewhere, it's up to them now. It's up yeah. to them. Mm. But I will not take any nonsense from anyone mm. who says that I should do something in a certain way. Mm. Because my, my own mother, who was there for me, does not even criticize anything I do. Mm. You understand? Yeah. If I get a tattoo, I get it. She's, she, 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 she doesn't tell me, oh, why did you get the tattoo? This, 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 this. Mm. But then there are some people there in Uganda. Oh, look at him. He has a tattoo. Oh, you This is crazy. Oh, he, this is a, mm. he's, he takes maybe uh, drugs or something like that. Mm. I'm like, hey, hold up. You ain't putting food on my plate. Mm. We ain't eating the same thing. So why are you waffling? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. What would what would you say? I guess your views are in terms on on British immigration. So I know you guys came over with uh, because it was I guess easier or there was some, uh, more opportunity because uh, your wife is a doctor. But what would you say um, in terms of the the rules and the policies around <coughs> migrating to the UK? Migrating to the UK is very expensive. Number one. When someone sees you coming to the UK, they think that you have a lot of money or you just there, you know, just mm -hmm. they think that but when people see you back home, they think, ah, the guy has money, going to send money, this, this, this. But in actual sense, it's a very, very, very expensive process. Mm. Just coming here, you have to have some amount of money on your bank account. Mm. The health surcharge is expensive. Uh, by the time we came, the health surcharge was 200 pounds per person, mm. per year. Then it's increased to 400 pounds per person per year. Mm. So and you, you have to pay. Yeah, you have to pay it while you're applying. Yeah. You, don't, you, don't, you don't say that you're paying per year, per year. No, no, you pay it when you're applying. So you can have ri ridiculous application fees of about, let me say, 5,000 uh, pounds, 6,000 pounds, maybe 10,000 pounds every time you're applying for a visa. And they, don't, they give you like a visa maybe probably for maybe one year, uh, sometime three years, uh, That's like 5, that. 5,000 pounds? Yeah. Because, that. see, if, for example, right now the health surcharge is £640 per person mm. per year. So now I have me and my wife. Then also the kids have to be counted. So mm. those are, let's say, five people times 640 times the number of years you're applying for. Those are three years. So just, no, that's just health surcharge. You haven't yet applied. Yeah. There's an application fee for each person. At that time, it was about, is it 500 pounds each person? Something like application fee. Some, they, they have a table that said, mm. this application fee, just pay application, application fee. Then, each person, mm. you add on that. Then afterwards, you have to book an appointment to do your biome biometrics. Yeah. Uh, get the fingerprints and everything. That's also for paying. If you don't get a free one, the free one, Usually you can get one or something like that. But if you want the one that is urgent, maybe you need to renew a visa urgently, they can tell you like, like 150 pounds each person. So by the time you finish, mm. a lot of expenses. The problem when you get here, people back home, they start calling you. Oh, hello, send me just 50 pounds. You're like, look at this guy. This 
guy even know the situation here. You yeah. understand? When you come here, the rent is so expensive. Mm. You're paying rent of about a thousand pounds a month. And when 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 the people they are just say, oh, this guy is, you know, he's went there, he's next to us, you know, he's next to stadium. So everyone just says, oh, it's like they think you're good. Mm. That's why sometimes I said it, I said it, you know, you, you have to tell people the truth. You tell them, you know what? Things are hard. Yeah. So the migration system is expensive and it's very restrictive. Mm. You don't just come here without a reason. The reason has to be backed by either your education or the amount of money mm. that you have. That's what they want. Mm. Amount of money is more of the entrepreneurial stuff. Probably you're investing in a business over 200,000 200, pounds. Oh, wow. Then if you're coming here, educational stuff, you have to be when you've got a job. You have applied for a job and they have made sure that there is no British person or national who, who has the Czech labor market or whatever. They have some tests, market mm. tests. So coming here is really, really hard. Mm. That is why when I got here, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yes. <laughs> by force or by fire. Uh huh. Mm. <laughs> okay, it's expensive. Mm. It's tough. And then it's expensive because the cost of all of the different, like the visa application, the health. It's crazy, but then also the pressure that you get from family thinking yeah. that you're, you know, living some sweet life over here. Yeah. On top as well. Okay. Mm. Okay, fine. And then, so, but it was a little bit easy for you guys because, um, because your wife is a doctor. So it, it it's difficult, but there was opportunity and you had the, it, I guess it, it's a bit more straightforward going down the health route, I guess, or the... Mm. I'm assuming. Yeah? The, 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 the whole through it, if you want to come here as a doctor, mm. um, it's also it's not so straightforward because they do English tests. Mm. Now, the funny thing, you can do an English test and then you pass reading. You pass, you re they really pass them highly, mm. but they want the English to a certain standard. You know, maximum in each section, they say listening, speaking, writing, something like that. They have those mm. sections. Mm. And the maximum is nine but they want 7.5 each. So you may find yourself getting seven somewhere. Yeah. Then you get eight, nine, something like that. Mm. It doesn't matter. Mm. You go back again and do. Yeah. But that's all money. You pay 200 pounds all the time to each do that time. test. Yes. Yeah. And then after that, after doing in English, which expires is it after every two years. But then you, if once you get the job, then you've entered the system. So that's fine. Oh, okay. So you do the English test to get that job. Then you have to do club exams. Whereby the doctor exams you do a, a theory test, whereby you go to an academy. You can either use Jackson's Academy. They have different academies where mm. you go and you learn. Mm. Doing the academy, I remember my wife paid about eight hundred pounds mm. just to study in that academy. It's like a month of intensive studying and knowing everything, how to treat the British people, uh, the the hospital and everything and whatever the policies and the stuff. Mm. They go there and, and, and they learn that stuff mm. and the medicines and everything. Okay. BNF, what they have different complicated things I cannot even say because uh, my tongue will twist and become <laughs> like, like cotton candy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. So they, they just, you know, they just, you do that, the, the theory test. After you pass that test, she did it in London, I think. Mm. Then you do the theory test. Again, the theory, I mean, they, they practice, then you do the practical test. The practical test, again, you go to an academy. Yeah. Where the same guys also, you do, you see bodies, you do this, do this stuff like that. Uh, then you, how you talk to people, you have to smile, what, be kind, the British culture and everything. You don't just can't tell a patient, like, you know, in Uganda, those kind of things. Eh? You be <laughs> nice and gentle. <laughs> yeah, you be nice and gentle. That you know what? Oh, come here, my friend. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is this is this. You know, it's a culture. Eh? No, not the other style. Wait. Chicha kule se wano. Rachel imrade. Senjiga akuluma no no demo geda kumi mo. Wabaachi. You know, that, that, that kind of thing. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So yeah, after doing that exam, then they, you need a good certificate of standing from Uganda. But with these things you see that they see, they check your documents, mm. you need internship where and all that. 
and they combine everything, then they say, okay, now you're registered with the GMC General Medical Council. Mm. Then you can, you know what? Now apply. Yeah, you now apply. Okay. You now apply. As a, uh, you know, you, once you get the certificate of, and you already had the job, combine this certificate, I'm working now, job. Ah, then you in the British thing, and then you can be with the visa. Mm -hmm. After five years, then you apply for citizenship and what? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm, that, that, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I'm doing, and mm. yeah, generally with no time, mm. you should just you know mm -hmm. just prepare. We're gonna have a party. Mm. <laughs> that, that's right. It sounds like a plan. I'll be there with a cup of tea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they come with a sponge. British style, you know. Yeah, yeah. and sponge, <laughs> whatever, cakes, and everything. You know, be doing British party. I'll film for you, and you'll you aren't you to understand to feel the experience. And to know where I'm from, mm -hmm. so that people who are watching right now, those who are happy for me will laugh, and the haters, please, hey. just I need your tears in a cup so that I can drink them. Okay. Oh my goodness! <laughs> All right, <laughs> last two questions. Okay. Getting too carried away here. All right, yeah. <laughs> last two. Yeah. Um, what advice then would you give to any other Ugandan person in in U in UG now thinking, okay, maybe I'll go to the UK. Um, or maybe I'll leave Uganda or whatever, or some other person from Africa, what advice would you give to them, having lived here as well for six years, what would you say? I was saying that uh, everywhere you go, London, USA, nowhere looks like Africa. Hey, remember that song? Yeah. Anyway, so Africa is a good place. Mm -hmm. If you're making good money, stay there. Okay. Making good money. But however, if you want to come to the UK, can also come. Some people come here, they work, they get the knowledge and they go back and they help Africa because Africa also needs help. Yeah, but for me, as me, as I told you before, the way I was born, I was born to be here. Mm -hmm. When I'm here, I'm comfortable. Mm. And I, my personal advice is to advise people to come in large numbers, mm. come here. Okay. And let us fill the UK with more black people. Mm. Please, I need your help. <laughs> I need your help. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, let's come, please. My black brothers and sisters, <gasps> I appeal to you, please. Uh, do do actually come over me? now. <laughs> and let us fill the UK mm. with more black people. <laughs> <laughs> us. All right, last one. Last one. Okay. <laughs> what do you, all right, as much as I know from, from the beginning you you sensed that you were British from long time and everything and you've been here now, but what what do you miss about home? What are some of the things that if you could bring here from UG from Africa, would you like what do you miss? What would you bring here if you could like perfectly snap and bring it over? Musevi. His Excellency is the person I miss. Mm. Yeah, you wake up time seven. He was, you know, he was ever in the news. Mm. For whether it's a good thing, whether it's a bad thing. Yeah, that's the kind of person I miss from Uganda. Yeah. Anyway, that's jokes aside, <laughs> <laughs> I know that one will divide so many people. Uh -huh. But anyway, what I miss about Uganda is the food. I miss the food. I miss the. The people, the social side, you know, mm. people being there and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I felt like it was, it was a good, you know, a good, a, a, a good, a good place to be in. The people are social. The only problem was probably the incomes were not that much. Mm. Yeah. And all, yeah. So, yeah. But I, I, I miss everything. I miss everything, whether good or bad. The political side, everything uh, from the president, the way Kaguta Museveni is there, uh, those, those, the people, Lukwago, and you know, all those things. The opposition is fighting this one, mm. the, the BCJ is doing this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. it, I, I feel like that thing always made me anticipate something to watch on TV okay. and see, like, okay, but still, even if you can watch, but there it feels more more real because you know these people are there and it's a situation that is there mm. yeah but yeah i miss the food mm. and the people yeah people. okay 
been nice. Well, thank you so much for coming on, on our, my YouTube channel. Thank yeah. you for sharing your story and giving us um, your gems of knowledge and recommendations as well, but also just telling your story on your terms. Thank you. If you have any questions for Edward, please comment, let me know, and we'll ask him to answer those questions for you. Like, share, and subscribe, of course, as well. Thank you again. Yeah. Um, and so... You guys all know this is Nor Speaks Out. I'm Nor, and today Edward has spoken, and so we're asking you, Wahura. Say it, Wahura. Wahura. Yeah. Yeah, which means, are you listening? Are you listening? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, thanks, you. Thank, thank you, guys. Thanks for everything. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I don't know everything, but I know something. You know something. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> bye, guys. Bye bye. <laughs>